Hey everybody and welcome to our live. I'm glad you could join us today and uh, we are going to have a great time. We have a special guest and I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to bring her in right away. Hey Linda, how are you? Good, how are you John? I am good. I think we are live. Jennifer just said she couldn't see anything on her screen, but you know what? We'll just talk to each other and okay. hopefully it records. So, But I did see that there were a bunch of people joining us from all over the place, uh, the UK, Netherlands, Minnesota, Apple Valley. I mean, they're, they're from That's all over. So fun. yeah, that is awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, actually, I wanted to uh, show your new project, but before we do that, I'm just going to go into a quick PowerPoint and let people know what's going on, because last week you were here and we went over, I guess, ESA fonts, and we went over some of your lessons, and I think I remember saying that I have not missed an ESA font uh, release uh, almost ever. Well, this is the first week that we've missed one, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, but it's okay. There's there's a reason why, and I'm going to share that afterwards. And then I want you to showcase your, your lesson for us, the new lesson that we've just released. And then I have a little bit of a surprise for you. And I'm going to show actually two more of my favorite things about Hatch. And the reason why is because uh, I guess Hatch is on sale right now. So I'm just going to bring up my screen. Hold on, guys. And let's see if I can do this. And... This always confuses me because I can't see what's going on, but hopefully everybody else will. So there we go. Share. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see everybody there. Just give me one more sec. Can you see it uh, on your screen, Linda? I can. I can. Yep. There's awesome. Me. <laughs> okay. And I, okay. Yeah, there you are. So you're our special guest. So uh, should I keep that up there for a while? No, that's okay. You can take it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just so you know, Jennifer is in the house as well. Jen, you Yay. want to say hi? Hey, Jen. Uh, you need to hit the button so it's green. No, you didn't. One time. Just one time fast. It's green now? Okay. Uh, you can, I guess you can't come over here and show me your mic. Do you want to come over into the corner? And I promise sure. I won't. Uh... Okay. Yeah. Jennifer is going to come into the corner here because her mic, uh, she comes... Can you step right over here and I'll get this all set up for you? So anyways, uh, back to school sale. Hatch is on sale right now until the 6th, I believe, and it is $200 off. Plus you get the Silver Academy. And if you choose us as your reseller, you'll receive our Digitizers Dream Course Level 1. You'll get 10 ESA fonts of your choice, which we went over last week. And there's also five embroidery designs that you get to choose as well. And I can see Jennifer is live now, hopefully. Can, can you hear her? I can hear her. I can hear her. Okay, you are live now. So Jennifer oh, is in the house. Click it. Yeah. It okay, so was that my fault, Jennifer? <laughs> She's not answering. Okay, so uh, last week I said, who loves free? And everybody loves free. We know that. But I, I did that for a reason because even if you aren't interested in purchasing Hatch during the sale, I always tell people, uh, you know, try the 30-day trial, give it a shot. If you have other software and obviously you're in love with it, then there's no need. But if you are looking for something that might be a little bit easier to use and uh, you know, we feel is kind of the best software out there for the home industry, uh, Wilcom does have it set up so that you can actually use the full version, but you don't just play on it. You actually get to save and sew your results. So you can try that free. We also have a digitizers uh, challenge, which is free on YouTube. And that is great because a lot of people will test drive software, but they open it up and they have no clue what to do next. And that's why we came up with the challenge because it does have five video lessons that take you through most of the basics. And I don't want to cover what we covered last week, but you did take it, Linda, and uh, you showed some samples last week. I but, did. Uh, and, I, you know, the members that are in a, both of our Facebook groups who've tried the challenge, they love it because it gives you kind of a quick start to where the tools are in Hatch and you immediately get five different projects to stitch out right away and save to your machine file and you know keep forever. So it's a great way to see the software in action as well as how it runs on your machine. For sure, for sure. And it also is worth joining our Facebook group because if you, uh, if you do join the group, uh, we have, I think, 9,000 members now. So. Uh, yeah, we, we actually, I did look from last week to this week. So we actually grew by over 100 members in the last week. Nice. And we did hit uh, 39,000 uh, YouTube subscribers, which is awesome. That means we're only 
one thousand yay we're one thousand away from my my goal that i've had for a while and then i'll set a new goal because that's what we do right and um, we've got some great admins i want to say hey to, to karen and jenny and ina and christine they're always very helpful in the group to help people answer questions and guide them through for the sure platform. For sure, for sure. And I should say that Jesse and James are helping us today on YouTube and Facebook. So if you have any questions, Jennifer will be monitoring that and we'll try to answer, you know, whatever we can during this session. So definitely give the challenge a try, even if you're new to our group and you have had Hatch for a little while, but you haven't, you know, really gotten into the tools and what they can do. It is a great way to start and it's absolutely free. So make sure you join our group because that's what we're here for. And as uh, Linda said, we have a, an incredible, uh, I guess, group of admins. And I think we're all kind of like family. Now, mm -hmm. also free uh, if you do have Hatch. And if you get the uh, trial even, you can come on our, on our site and download this. We do have a free ESA monogram font and also a free lesson done by yours truly. So this is a monogram towel, and we kind of did this so that people could, I guess, see exactly how you teach and what you do. Mm -hmm. And I've seen uh, the response within the groups. Everybody loves you. Oh, well, I love everybody. <laughs> Everybody's so nice and very generous with kind comments. So it makes me feel like I'm doing something right, and everybody's kind of learning through the process. So. Fun. Yeah, for sure. And you are definitely doing something right. If you if you didn't join us last week, I, I, I mentioned that uh, we all have our gifts and our strengths and we all differ from each other. That what's that's what makes everything, you know, kind of so much fun. So mm -hmm. you definitely have a creative flair that I don't necessarily think I have, but I might put that to the test a little bit later on, too. So, <laughs> but uh, besides that free lesson, this is your new lesson and this is the floral monogram frame. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, you do get the springtime ESA font file. As I mentioned last week, if you do get one of Linda's lessons, they're, they're yours for life. They'll stay in your classroom so you can do them over and over again. But we always include the ESA file that Linda is focusing on. So in reality, you're getting a $10 ESA font and you're getting the lesson for like $5.95. So it is a great deal. Now, do you have some samples and do you want to go into a little bit of detail you know, on this? So a couple months ago, I, I'm always playing with the software. So I, I love all your ESA fonts and glyphs. So using Hatch, you don't really have to know necessarily how to digitize, but when you learn to use the tools, you can create so many different projects. So I did come up with this monogram frame and I posted it in both the groups and I got like huge response. People really loved it. So I thought, well, hey, that's a great kind of starting point. Why not teach people how I did this? So I used your ESA, um, the springtime floral, and you can see there's so many different flower designs, but I just concentrated on a couple and I, and I worked my way through the design using like the um, horizontal, they're horizontal and I used a couple of border frames and there's some um, edge run outlines and I'll show you how to duplicate and, and clone objects and as well as set up the um, monogram frame. So with that in mind, being an ESA based um, design, you can really resize it. So I made this pillow and just going from one side to the next, again, it has a really beautiful stitch out. So that's what I love about the, oops, I'm, I'm sorry about my, my have hanging on the screen. I, how I love these different um, glyphs that you've come up with as well as all the really pretty fonts. So you can change different fonts, different colors um, based on maybe your decor, maybe you've got a housewarming gift or, you know, like make a, just a pretty little tea towel. Again, it looks pretty in a monochromatic way. So in the lesson I show you a, several different ways of how you can use different monograms and set them up within the frame as well as show you how to actually go about digitizing the, the floral frame. Now, do you show the different sizes and how you actually change the properties and settings? With I do. Awesome, awesome. Because yeah. that is one of the things that does make Hatch kind of unique to some other programs. And, mm -hmm. and other programs, don't get me wrong, other programs are object-based as well because every uh, software has its own native file format which means that obviously resizing designs is always best in the you know, native file format to the software you own, and you'll always get the best results. 
But uh, Wilcom, their EMB file format and the ESA fonts, uh, they are truly object based. Like you got to think of it almost like a vector piece of artwork. You know, you can you can resize a vector uh, object from a matchbox cover to a billboard, and it will always re, you know retain its perfect shape, no mm -hmm. matter how big or how small you make it. Now that can't necessarily be 100% true with embroidery because there are you know minimums and maximums, and I guess do you do you actually when you resize things smaller do you kind of measure off the the widths and make sure that you fall I do. within certain? Yeah, with um, like satin stitches, you really don't want to go lower than like one millimeter. I like to stick to like one and a half millimeters. So I I'm always running samples just to kind of test the limits to see how you know, low, I can go with that and, and see if you still get good results. But um, basically, when you kind of know the, the tools and, and how well these ESA um, glyphs work, you can break them apart. And I've resized them in the video to show you how to change some nodes in there to reshape them. It's just, mm. it's just a lot of fun. So and then with that whole font pack there, I mean, probably a 1000 different ways that you can come up with a whole new design. Yeah, and, and then I know with like the flowers, you have different options where if you make them really big, you can take that satin stitch and you can, you know, uh, make it so that it does. Uh, what's that tool again where it uh, splices the oh, stitches the together? Split satin. Yeah. yeah, split satin. Sorry. Yeah. You think I'd know that by heart by now, but and then there's also the ability to turn them into fill stitches. Exactly. And th that's the amazing thing is when you look at an object and if you convert it from a satin to a fill, then you can change the fill property. So if you want a fill that actually looks nice and flat and smooth, you choose, you know, numbers one through five, let's mm -hmm. say in hatch. But if you want something that looks more random and more like nature, then you can go to the lower end of the spectrum and you can get more of a, you know, a rough look on those mm -hmm. fills. So there, there's literally, you know, limitless possibilities when you're doing that type of stuff. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, and really on this pillow, if you took it and, even double the size and switch it to a tatami it's you know the different fill stitches it would still stitch out you know beautifully too so that's what's yeah fun about them yeah and that is pretty cool and it, it's also good when you have somebody who explains to you in a lesson and that's what i try to do in my lessons as well is as i'm going through the lessons and i know you do this you're almost talking about why you're resizing it mm -hmm. and you know when you're going over a certain stitch length that you know, this is the, uh, you know, property that you need to check, or this is what you need to change. And that's where I think the the repetitiveness of it, I mean, you learn it once, it kind of sticks in the back of your brain. And then next time you're creating something, if it's, you know, if you're digitizing, you already have that knowledge there, and you're just retrieving it and applying it to what you do. So, you know, that is the the cool thing. Mm -hmm. now, and, and I did mention as well that you've kind of taken it to the next level because uh, you have a new baby. You have the ZSK machine. And I, I know I, I saw that I saw that in the comments as well. People were congratulating you. Yeah. And uh, so that, that relationship still going strong. It's still going strong. <laughs> but so far, we haven't broken up yet. So okay. I don't I don't, see that happening. <laughs> No, no, I've got I don't, some really big frames. So I'm thinking I'm, I might have to test that out. I, I was able to get a 13 by 15 inch hoop, which is huge. So I'm, uh, I think I'm going to put this to the challenge and, and run it large. And, and fire, and yeah. Well, I, I think you should, to be honest, yep. because you, I mean, having a hoop that size and not using it, that's like, yep. you know, sacrilegious when it comes yep. to embroidery. So that's awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to just go back to our screen. Now, is there anything else you wanted to show us before I move on to a no, couple of other things? I was just kind of concentrate on this tonight and see, see what else you had in store. Okay. Perfect. Cause, it, cause we have a, uh, I have a little bit of a challenge for everybody later or a contest, I should say, but I'm going to focus it specifically to you afterwards. So it's going to be kind of fun. So we're going to, we're going to go head to head if that's okay. Okay. okay so uh, now beyond the, actually, let me just go back here. Sorry, guys, I got to switch between PowerPoints and all that. Uh, one thing that I did want to show you guys, and I, I'm not going to show this exact sample this time, because uh, when we're talking about EMB files and the ability to resize a file, if you know how to create a design 
with the foresight that you might want to make it larger or smaller, that will determine what tools you use. And what I mean by that is if I have a Great Dane like the one that you see there, the little Great Dane is actually the original design, but I was able to do the unthinkable with the uh, EMB file and resize it to a much larger design and only have to make a few modifications. And that that is the beauty of dealing with object-based uh, you know, design. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing this and I'm going to come back in and I'm going to call up the uh, software because I'm going to show you how I can resize a design as well and how I can make it actually work to our advantage. Now, I'm going to minimize you for a second, Linda. So I'm going to say goodbye for one minute, but I'll bring you back. Make sure you don't leave. I won't. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna go back in and call up the Hatch software so that everybody can see what I'm doing. Let's just go over here, guys. And here I go right now. Now, you might recognize this person. Now, Linda, I took her off the screen, but she's back on screen now anyways, because this is her character stitch that we did. And I just wanted to show how you can resize a design because this is the original size of the design. It's about five inches, I think just a little bit under, and it's 27,000 stitches within the design. Now, one thing I do wanna let you know that besides the ability to resize designs, Wilcom also has something called Fabric Assist. Now this only works properly within a native file format. So you can't take in a PES file or an outside file format and use the tool that I'm about to show you because it will have very little effect on the result. But within the Hatch software, you'll always see at the bottom corner, there is an embroidery grade. There's a grade A, and A means that it is a native file format. I'm not gonna get into all of the different grading, but when I see a grade A file, that means that it's like two thumbs up, I'll be able to go in there and pretty much do whatever I want. So first thing I need to do is put on my glasses, and then I'm going to go to my uh, design here, and I'm going to go to Customize Design, I'm gonna go to Auto Fabric Assist. I'm gonna check the Fabric Assist, and I digitized this with pure cotton in mind, which is kind of a default setting that was within Hatch. And when I take it and I go to, let's say, tie silk, which would have less density, I can click that button, and it's going to apply it to all of the existing objects. And then it literally took, I guess, uh, about 2,400 stitches out of that design. So I have 25,197 stitches now. So if you know which fabric you're running something on, you wouldn't necessarily just run the same design on every single fabric type because every fabric type has different settings. So if I came in here now and I wanted to go from Thai silk to let's say uh, you know a fleece, a fleecy fabric, I know there's gonna be more pull compensation, more density, I hit the okay, and it actually went up to 31,000 stitches. So at the click of a button, I'm able to go in there and I'm able to adjust the uh, properties of the underlay, the pull compensation, the density of the design, but keep in mind this only works within EMB file formats. Now, if I take uh, Linda and I duplicate her, and now we have two Lindas, but I don't know if the world could handle two Lindas. But what, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to increase this to like 150%. So I'm going to take this up and make it much larger. Now, if you look at that design right now and I bring it up full screen, the transition between those two designs is almost perfect. Now, Keep in mind, when I digitize these Carica Stitch designs, I make sure that I use a lot of fill patterns and I use fills that blend into each other. And when I do the hair, I make sure that I use contour fills and not just running stitches so that when you do resize these, you still maintain the object that will resize in accordance with how large you've made it. So in other words, a run stitch is a run stitch. You can't really make a run stitch a bunch of run stitches 150% larger and expect them to duplicate themselves. They won't do that. But if you have a fill stitch, which is a contour, it has a curve showing the kind of the, the wave of the hair, and actually I should fix my hair, but the wave of the hair, that is going to automatically add more hair in because of the way you've done it. Now, the one thing I do wanna let you know is that you will need to make some adjustments. And this is what Linda was saying 
uh, earlier about making a design larger. If I turn off the true view here and I go basically nice and close into the teeth, I can see right here, and let's just do this. I'm going to go right to the teeth, and if I can find it, I'm going to grab that color, and I'm going to hide all of the unselected. So there, everything else is hidden. Now I can see that there's a bunch of staggered lines there, and that means that that stitch length has gone over the um, you know 12 millimeters, which would cause trims or jumps on the machine. Even though in the true view it looks like a satin stitch, I know when that embroiders because it's gotten so long, it's going to actually have negative results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, objects. So if I just go to the objects that are there and I go to the objects that have the teeth in there, I can select that one object right here. Let me select it. And actually, you know what, I'd have to ungroup it first. But I can select that one object. Hold on, guys. Let me ungroup these. And come in. Can I throw in a question? Sure, yep, throw in a question, John. questions, feel free to message some men or post them, I guess. Uh, if you're not sure what fabric type the design would be stitched on, what would be the best fabric setting that you would choose? Uh, the standard fabric setting that I choose for most of my designs is the pure cotton. It has a standard 0.4 density. It has a standard density on fills. The underlay is kind of standard for most fabric types. So it's like a, a cotton denim type fabric setting. And I know that my designs generally work well within that parameter. If I'm going to fabrics that I have a lot of loft or I know that there's pile and things are going to sink in, that's when I'll change it. Or if I know I'm going to be running on a shirt or something that is a lighter fabric, I'll also change those properties so that there's less density in them as well. Now, I did grab those teeth. And now if I look here and I have to go, do you have another question, Jen? I'm going to change this to metric just so you can see it. So when I grab those teeth right here, I can see that there is no auto split selected. So if I hit that auto split now and I turn back on the true view, you can see that it looks like there is uh, kind of growling in those teeth, but I need to have that in there because of the size of the design. When you make a design that much larger, you need to make some of the adjustments. I might also need to go into the eye area. And if I look here and zoom in really close, I can see that some of these objects might need to be edited so that it will adjust for the increase in the size. So I will need to go into you know, objects sometimes and go and play with them. I might actually take that eye that's there and I would grab that eye and I'm just going to grab one side of it like that and I'm going to make this much larger that way and then I'll grab the other side here, make this much larger the other way and then I might come in and grab these objects and pull them down. So I'm filling in the gaps. So little things will need to be modified, but if you know what you know is going to happen when you resize it, then you can start to go in very quickly and fill in the blanks. So the only thing I need to do to this design is kind of change the teeth like I did and maybe fix the eyes and I'd be ready to go. Another question, Jen? Awesome. So anyways, that, that gives you guys a little bit of an idea of how you can resize an EMB file and sometimes the adjustments or modifications you need to make. Now, that all comes down to having a basic foundation or theory of actual digitizing. And we do have a free, you know, I think 101 digitizers cheat sheet and course where you can watch it. And basically what I do is I give people all of the parameters for a satin stitch, running stitch, fill stitch, and, you know, the minimums and maximums. And that way, when you get a design in your software and you start to see these things happen, you actually have some of the foundational terminology and the theory to back it up and make your designs run better on your machine. So, um, Anyways, I know I didn't teach you anything new at all, Linda, right? You, you well, knew you all that. You a big head, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you might appreciate that. I mean, it was kind of fitting, you know, it was, uh, so, <laughs> and, and I did run a couple samples, so I'm going to show a couple samples here, too, because here is, what's that? Okay, <laughs> did, did you hear that? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, is your mic on? She said better Linda than her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer is very camera shy. She's she's rarely been on. But here's the original design, right? 
Yeah. Now, I did do something, and actually, I'm going to show this on screen here. Let me just bring back up my PowerPoint for a second and let's share the screen. Eventually, I'll get so good at this, I won't need to talk my th way through it, but that may never happen. Okay, so um, there's the original PowerPoint back up again. Now, here, if I look at the design, the Kirika stitch, if you guys want to get a Kirika stitch done for Christmas time, uh, you know, uh, we do offer that service. Keep in mind, they are custom done. So we don't use auto digitizing software. Uh, you know, we actually have an incredibly talented artist who, uh, you know, does all of the caricatures. And then we have the designs that are digitized manually and you can get those done for Christmas gifts. So it's kind of perfect. But I did do something a little bit interesting, and this is why I didn't do an ESA font. I can hear you laughing. Uh, I did a ESA wanted file. So this is a wanted file. It's perfect for actually doing a wanted poster. And I did uh, convert all of these ESA objects to a design pack as well in all of the formats. So if any of you do get a character stitch done, and I know we've had a ton of them that we've done since we announced this. It's kind of slowed down because I haven't advertised it in a while because I needed a bit of a break. But if you want one of these done for Christmas time, and if you would be so kind as to give us a little testimonial or show us, you know, giving it to that special loved one, then absolutely free, I will give you the uh, wanted ESA design pack. So they're kind of pretty cool, wouldn't you say? They're awesome. That's really cute. Jenny Cherry, you need one of those. <laughs> her stitch turned out really cute, and I could see her having that frame around hers. Yeah, for sure. Now, I did actually do one, and you might notice this person right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So I made sure I ran and I resized you so that you were a little, you know, bigger. So everything that we did in that little, I actually did for this. I adjusted it. So I'm actually, uh, you're, you're sending me some samples because I'm checking into a hotel room later. And when I check into the hotel room to grab those samples, and so we can take photos of them because you do incredible samples. When I return them, I'm going to throw this in the box for you. <laughs> With the $10,000 too? <laughs> uh, well, let's not get carried away now. Uh, if you if you want me to repeat what Linda, Linda just said, it was blah, 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 blah. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Can't wait oh, no that. problem. So I just thought that was kind of creative. I, mm -hmm. I, I just was sitting there kind of thinking, well, what would you do with a Kerica stitch that could be kind of fun? And That's I remember so those fun. old wanted posters and I thought that was actually uh, kind of cool. So yes, Jennifer. We have a question. What yep. changes would you need to make if you wanted to make the design smaller? Uh, what changes would you need to make if you wanted to make the design smaller? Do you want to take this one, Linda, and then I'll give my, my answer to it as well? Um, well, typically I, I, on my, design on this one, I did use the pure cotton setting. So when I make it smaller, I'll start at maybe like 20% and I will go in and I will look to see what kind of um, underlays are. So sometimes you'll have to change the underlay from a satin stitch to a uh, center run, or I'll change some of the edge runs and bring them in narrow. If, if the satin lines are very narrow, that's why it's really important to run some samples because you don't, it looks awesome on screen, but sometimes depending on the fabric and the weave of the fabric, you might have to make some adjustments to a full compensation or an underlay. So the, the running of the samples, I know that's not always the most exciting thing to do, but you I could actually learn a lot when things stitch out and, and make note of it. And it's kind of a good reference too. But. For sure. Well, I, I agree with everything you said. I, I think that especially for the ESA files, when I do give a minimum mm -hmm. uh, that is the suggested minimum, I know that people are going to always break the rules. I mean, that's a given, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so I know that they can be a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you, exactly what you said, if I, if I am looking at a design and making it smaller, it's, uh, there's going to be elements of a design that will run well on the machine. You know, mm -hmm. some of these satin stitches are wide enough. So then, you know, you just have to look at the objects that are in the danger zone. And I will do the same thing. I might change the underlay from an edge run to a center run. Uh, I might actually do a zigzag because mm -hmm. then it doesn't give a straight line down the middle. It almost goes in the same line as the satin stitch. Uh, also, you can actually grab those groups of thin lines or satin stitches and add more pull compensation. Mm -hmm. 
all in one setting. Lot, so actually, on yeah, the, on the narrower ones, it really does. You you wouldn't think going from like 0.20 to you know 0.25 makes a difference, but but it does on those narrower stitches, and you get a prettier stitch out. For sure, for sure, yeah. So and grabbing pull comp, and that might be you know selective pull comp, exactly. where you're not necessarily you know adding pull comp to the entire design, mm -hmm. but just to certain objects. Uh, the other thing, in the worst case scenario, is you can go break that object apart, or if you've digitized it, look at those uh, designs that or objects that have gotten really thin, and you can go into node editing and literally start moving the nodes so that it's further apart. That takes more work, but you know, I do that all the time as mm -hmm. well. You'll get good results with that too. So it's good sure. to know kind of all your different options and to really play with the software because until you do that, it doesn't make sense. So you got to make some mistakes and, and learn how to correct them. And then the design always improves. For sure, for sure. And before you know it, you have a ZSK machine sitting in your right. uh, sewing room. <laughs> so. And I keep saying that because I'm jealous. Actually, when I head back to uh, to do some filming later in the month, I get to play with my ZSKs again. So I am looking awesome. so forward to that. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, Jennifer? Okay, awesome. And let me just go back and share the screen again. I got a few other things to show. And there we go. Okay. So the wanted poster. So anyways, if anybody is interested in that, I think the boys have probably put a link. Now, this is where we're going to have some fun, Linda, because uh, we are actually announcing a Halloween uh, embroidery or EMB contest. Oh, and there's going to, yeah. So uh, let me just go back to the screen here and I want to make sure that I can see what's going on. Uh, this was done kind of last minute. So it's not as, uh, I guess, professionally done as I would normally like to have it done. Now, the reason why is we have a ton of, of projects that are coming up behind the scenes that J my son Jesse has been working on. And he said to me a while back, he said, Dad, do not spring anything else on me because he couldn't handle any anymore. Uh, so I kind of went around him a little bit and I said, well, I'm going to throw a little party but we won't necessarily do it the way we did the parties last year. We're going to do this one a little differently. It's going to actually be a party that we do. And I know I have a, a banner thing here. One sec, just give me one second because this will uh, roll through and we should. Okay, so there. We're going to do a Halloween contest this year. So it's the 2021 Halloween contest. It's going to be September 29th at 6 p.m. Now, if you want to participate in this, you can do it in a bunch of different ways. Number one, if you have the Hatch software, or if you'd like to download the free trial for the 30 days and participate in this, uh, all you have to do is email us at contact at embroiderylegacy.com. Now, this is where it's going back to old school because Jesse didn't want to build a landing page and do all of the fancy stuff that he normally does. So if you want to participate, all you have to do is send us an email to contact at embroiderylegacy.com and type in Halloween contest in the subject. And what we'll do is we will send you out all of the official rules and guidelines for the contest. And we'll send you uh, by email three of the EMB files. Okay, these are actually uh, EMB files that I saved out of an upcoming ESA file that's coming later on. And there's three of them to choose from. We have the haunted house, we have the pumpkin, and we have the scary tree. Now the rules are kind of like this, and you can read them if you do want to participate. Everybody has to submit a design done on a black T-shirt. So that's number one. Everybody's using the same piece or you know garment to actually sew their design on. Number two, you have to choose one out of the three objects to make your focal point. So you can't do all three, you have to choose one of them. Now I know enough about the psychology of business is that you can't tell people what to do. If I would have only given them a haunted house, they wouldn't have liked that. And if I uh, you know only gave them two choices, that wouldn't be enough. So I chose three. And I didn't choose more, but I chose three so that you could choose your favorite one. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to bring that into your software as an EMB file, and then you can do whatever you want to it. Now, Linda, what do you think? And you don't have to tell me because okay, I, I should mention this right now. And this is the fun part, part for me. Uh, you and I can't actually enter the contest. Okay, Linda? Good. 
Okay, so you and I can't enter, but we're going to have a little side contest going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so I want you to come up with your absolute craziest best idea, oh, and then boy. I'm going to I'm going to come up with mine. And then during the live show, we'll have, we won't tell whose is whose, but we'll have people come on and they're going to vote for which one they like. And then I'll probably cry like a little girl at night in a fetal position when I lose. Okay. But it's going to, it's going to be, are you in agreement? Will you do this? I'll with do me? it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now, so basically if you would have an EMB file like this, can you think of some creative things you could possibly, and you don't have to give me, give away what you have in mind to, cause you don't want to, you don't want to share your potential secrets, but you could take this and make an applique, right? Applique for sure. Okay. You could, you do, could do offsets. Offsets. Okay. Now here's the, the rules, just so you guys know, the rules for this are you get that, you know, base image and you aren't allowed to use any outside stock designs or anything. Whatever you do to embellish this has to be done within hatch. So you have like a gazillion motifs, you have mm -hmm. offsets, you can turn it into, you know, a satin stitch around the outside. You can, you know, add multimedia to it. You can, digitize some other objects inside of one of these objects if you want. So be as creative as you want to be. And then you will submit your picture of this to us by the 27th. So two days before we actually have the, the live webinar. Now, uh, the 29th is the webinar. The 27th is when we need to have them in house so that we can choose the top five you know, people. So we're going to choose the top five people, all the admins and everybody will choose the top five entries. And then we are going to do this so that it'll be live on Facebook and it will be live on YouTube. But I'm also going to set it up so that we do it as a Zoom webinar. Now, there is going to be absolutely no charge to join this webinar. Uh, so if you want to be actually in the webinar and participate and do all of the polls and everything, all you have to do within the email that we send you, and again, even if you don't want to enter the contest, but you want to be in the webinar, then we will send you the information to register. And we are limited on the amount of people within our webinars, so you'll want to get signed up right away. But it would be really helpful because we need people to vote. You know what I mean? That's the that's the beautiful part of Zoom. Vote for me. Can, vote for me. Vote for me. I'm not okay. Uh, we're not talking about our little competition right now. We're talking about the other people who can oh, win the okay. prizes. <laughs> but and yeah, we'll 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 vote for us too. But you won't know who's is who's, right? That's the thing. No, not, no, I'm I'm excited to see everybody's out there, all their all their creative ideas because that always spurs more creative ideas down the road. So yeah, be for sure. very yep. creative. We learn from each other, yes. which is the cool thing. Exactly. So anyways, uh, that's going to be how that contest kind of works. I didn't go into all the details, but if you're interested in participating, just send us an email. We'll send you the EMB files. We'll send you the rules that we kind of set up around it. And we're going to have a first, second, and third prize. And it's going to be uh, all of our different memberships. So we have our, uh, I guess, embroidery addict, our, what do we call them now? There's the occasional embroiderer and there's the enthusiast. So we have three wow. different levels of our design club. And uh, you'll, you'll want to participate because we're making some cool changes in that as well. So, uh, and you get all that stuff free anyways, Linda. So it's not like it would matter. Ah, okay. Well, Linda, what's your price for helping per hour? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I want to see how creative people can be. I mean, there's, I know this is going to yeah. be fun. I mean, last year we did the party and it was a big mm -hmm. party, which was awesome. Uh, so we're going to do it. It's going to be just like another party and we'll mm -hmm. have some specials and stuff like that as well. But the best part is it's free and everybody will be able to watch and everybody can participate. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. So now, you yep, you can grab the 30 day trial if you don't mm -hmm. have Hatch, if you want to do this. But wait, there's more. OK, we are going to do this contest for the EMB contest. And then we also have a little, uh, well, it's not little, but we have another contest that's going to go along with it. And let me just get to my PowerPoint so I can show you the next slide. This is our 2021 Embroidery Legacy Contest. 
Okay, now this one is going to be another contest that we're running at the exact same time. So if you don't have Hatch, if you don't want to do the EMB thing, you can actually take a black t-shirt and you can be as creative as you want with all of our designs and smash them all over a shirt and do whatever you want to do. Um, we actually have a ton of uh, Halloween designs on our site. If you're a member, you probably, you know, you get a gazillion points. You can download whatever you want. So that is uh, another contest where we'll have a first, second, and third prize as well. So if you don't want to participate in the EMB one, you can just dress up a, a black t-shirt. The only really prerequisite about that one is that we ask that you use our embroidery designs on the shirt and not designs from another vendor. So that's the only, only rule. Now, uh, I don't want to compete with you on that one, Linda, because I actually digitized all these. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, that was one of, do you remember that design from last year? I do, yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. And actually, uh, we did run that sample and we did it in uh, glow in the dark thread. Oh, I was going to ask, did you do it? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, we did that in the haunted house and the glow in the dark thread. So, uh, that, that was a great party last year, but uh, so that, that's kind of what we're going to be doing, guys. To enter again, just make sure you, uh, you know, type in Halloween party and contest or Halloween contest, whatever you want. We'll send you the information so it'll come in the e in e by email within a couple of days and then join us live on the 29th at 6 p.m. And that'll be lots and lots of fun. Now, we do have a Halloween design sale that has started. And we have, I guess, tons and tons of Halloween designs. But we do have all of our Halloween designs on sale for 51% off because uh, it is that time of year. But if you are a member of our uh, Legacy Club, uh, you actually have a better deal than the 51%. Anyways, you can just go on and use your points to download whatever you want. So uh, we are going to just uh, very quickly talk about a couple of the webinars we have coming up. And then I think that is basically it. But we always give away some prizes during these live sessions. And we're going to give away a spot to somebody on YouTube and somebody in uh, Facebook. So if you want to type in the word win right now or, you know, just type that in. Is that good, Jen? Then uh, Jesse and James are going to pick one person randomly uh, during this live session, and you will have your choice of actually going to the uh, one of the two webinars we have coming up. The first one's coming up in a couple weeks' time, and that is the Digitizers uh, Beginners Workshop. It's two weekends, a Saturday and a Saturday, so if you want to join up for that, just click on the link, and we will get you past the learning curve in a couple of weekends, and we give you interactive lessons to do in between or our 3D webinar, which is on October 2nd. So you can choose, the winners can choose whichever one of those webinars they actually want. And uh, other than that, we obviously, and those numbers have changed, Linda, our Facebook group has uh, now grown. So that is That's awesome. Yeah, yep. everything's everything's growing, which is kind of cool. It means we're, we're kind of doing something right mm -hmm. now. Uh, any other questions we have coming in, Jen? Or? experimenting more and more with the digitizing tools. Yay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you really can't break anything for the most part. I mean, you just, you just play, right? Exactly. And, and that's how yeah. you really discover new, new, new ways of doing things. That's how I kind of figured what my way around it too. So for sure. And yeah, I, I did the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. but I, I did mine with a lot of tears when I was younger <laughs> because we, we didn't have an undo button in those days and oh, we yeah. weren't we weren't digitizing on a computer screen and you actually had uh, paper tape it was just it was it was terrible but i remember you know running samples over and over and over again and even jennifer jennifer actually did learn how to digitize how long ago was that jen 24 so 24 years ago. 24 years ago yeah i trained her and and it I, it was a little uh, stressful because I thought she was going to kill me at certain times. <laughs> it was a puck. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer was so, she was such a trooper. She was actually nursing James while she was digitizing. Wow. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so anyways, uh, do we have a couple winners? Yep. Sue had said if she was looking to 
understand more of the ESA technology, where would you find it? Uh, the ESA technology, I know, uh, didn't we just post something in the group about the differences of all of the uh, flexi fills and we the... Did. And then if, if you're, if they join that, our hatch facts group, I've got a lot of different tips and posts on the flexi fills. So I'm always ha happy to help people navigate their way through and see how much fun they really are, work, are to work with. So join the For hatch sure. facts group to it'll be really kind of hone in on the ESA fonts and glyphs. Well, and I, I have to, I guess, uh, pay tribute to all of the uh, admins. And I know a couple of you are participating in doing most of the uh, Friday, Friday, mm -hmm. you know, things that we've been doing. Tomorrow, but yep. yeah, they are incredible. And, and Jennifer and I were actually just saying this to each other. I think it was yesterday that in my opinion, most other companies would actually have those as charged lessons you know what i mean like they mm -hmm. they would be a lesson that you in, in my opinion could pay for they're so good and if you guys you know any of you that are in our group and have done some of our you know friday tridays uh and you think that they're awesome just give us some hearts and some thumbs up because that's uh your hard work and and you know the other admins are participating as well i even said that i'd do a couple didn't i yeah you did but so yeah. far i haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, I better. Do anytime you like. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we love. I mean, the Friday Fridays are a lot, a lot of fun, and we tomorrow's going to be a little bit of a skill build builder, and then it'll be turned into a project in a in a couple weeks. So we try to focus on a different tool or an aspect to learn something new. Last week we did a little white work project, and it turned into a little pin cushion. So we yeah. try to make things that are are useful but you're also learning learning the tools so and it's fun and we've got quite the following within the group and they they look forward to friday mornings to get that new fresh idea going their way for the weekend for sure for sure and the, the tips and everything so mm -hmm. i mean that's the, the resources between our facebook group and all of the i guess the the written stuff that's there mm -hmm. and all of the videos that we have on youtube and then your lessons i I can honestly say I, I think we have the best software support in the industry. And I, I know I'm saying that, but that's what we I, I hear from. Agree. We've, we've yeah. got great admins and great members who jump in and everybody's just really kind because you're different skill levels. So you've got new people who come in and don't, you know, they're kind of like, where do I start? And then you, we've got so many kind members that just kind of jump in and give them encouragement. And we try to help everybody kind of along the way. So it's just kind of a fun learning process, no matter where you are, you know, in your digital sure. journey. And, and we do try to, I guess, I guess help people that don't have hatch as well. So just mm -hmm. so you know, yeah. out there, if we do have two different Facebook groups, mm -hmm. one geared specifically to hatch and the other one is geared to, you know, machine embroidery as a whole. So, you know, if you have questions about your, you know, uh, you know, Floriani or, you know, stitch artist or Bernina, Bernina or Janome software, uh, we might not get as deep or specific, but we do try to answer those questions. And then keep in mind, there's like 20,000 other members that can chime mm -hmm. in as well, mm -hmm. which is awesome. It cool. Is awesome. awesome. Well, I think we're almost done. Uh, Jennifer? Yes, one question. Anne says uh, she has Wellcom, not Hatch. Still in the yep. If you have the commercial Wilcom software, Wilcom does make Hatch. Uh, the EMB files that we will include for that uh, contest, they're available to you, and you can do essentially the same thing with that uh, E, you know, 4.5 software as you can in Hatch. So definitely feel free to participate. Yeah, we have a lot of people saying they love the Friday Friday. Yay! Okay, so yeah. they love. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, anyways, I really appreciate you joining us again, Linda. This one's cutting a little shorter than an hour today, but uh, I think we're almost out of content. We do have to give away a couple of prizes. Yes. Okay, so here we go, Jennifer. Okay, our Facebook winner, uh, you can email to contact at embroiderylegacy.com with your choice of the webinar, is Christy Colburn. So congratulations. Yay, Christy. Good Christy. for you. Yay, Christy. And awesome. The YouTube winner, again, if you could email contact at embroiderylegacy.com, is Cheryl Moore. Okay, yeah. awesome. Great. So, yeah. Cheryl, if you also want to email in, that would be great. Yep. And keep in mind, even if you can't make the webinars either of those days, but you still sign up, 
those will be in your classroom so you can watch them afterwards. So if you're not able to join us live, you still, you know, don't have to worry. You won't miss uh, that content. So everything should be good there. And I am kind of proud of myself because right before we started this, Jennifer said to me that I have to really watch how many times I say the word actually, because I actually say actually quite a bit. And it actually bothers Jennifer that I say actually so much. So I'm actually going to try not to say actually quite so much in the future. Okay. <laughs> so Jennifer, that's her job. She's still, after all these years, she's, she's continually training me. Right, Jen? <laughs> never ending battle. <laughs> it's a never ending battle. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a, a willing participant. That's yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you very much, Linda. I appreciate your time. And we have more projects, uh, more of your video lessons coming up in the future. But make sure you guys go and check that one out. It is awesome. And everybody loves monograms. So, great. Okay. Everything good? Okay. Saying they just got their power back, so yay. yay. Okay, yeah, actually, uh, quite the storm out there. We just hope that everybody has stayed safe, yeah. and yeah, so uh, it's a long weekend for some. yeah, and it's a long weekend for some, so have a wonderful week. Oh, and we did actually just uh, have a surge here as well, but I think I'm back on, guys. So, Linda, uh, thank you for joining us, and we will talk to everybody later on. Take care.